Okay, question 10 and 11 kind of go together. 10 asks us, how do we distinguish among solutions, colloids, and suspensions? So this is kind of another definition question. So I'm going to kind of give you my summary. And you don't have to write this down, but it's all about the size of the solute particles and how well they stay mixed with the solvent. That's how we can tell the difference between these three things. So I'm actually going to start with suspensions because um, they have the biggest particles. And they're so big, in fact, that they don't stay mixed into the suspension. Um, it's called a suspension because the particles are suspended, held up in solution, but then they're going to fall out of solution um, back down to the bottom generally. They're going to separate out. The solute and the solvent will not stay mixed. So technically these aren't solutions, but they're related. Now, colloids have kind of medium large-ish particles. Um, they do stay mixed, so it's not a suspension. They won't fall out, but they have large enough particles that they're going to kind of reflect, refract that light. Uh, this is called the Tyndall effect. Tyndall effect. So you can tell if something is a true solution or a colloid by using some light. And if you can see that light beam pass through the solution, the mixture, then that's a colloid and not a true solution. Um, and then solutions are kind of boring because they don't let you see lasers or anything. And um, you, they just honestly look like water with food coloring in them because they're perfectly dissolved. They might just look like water because it's just clear. You can't see anything in these. They have the smallest particles and they are perfectly homogeneous, all the same throughout. Um, can't tell that there's stuff in that liquid. So, kind of boring, but most useful for chemists. Now, Eleven asks for examples, and I'm going to write them right here because I don't have enough space to have these listed out again, but you probably have enough space to list out suspension, colloid, and solution again and list these examples separately, but do whatever you got room for. So, suspensions, my favorite example, you might laugh, but glitter water. Just put some glitter in a water bottle, shake it up, it looks pretty as it's swirling around, it'll look pretty well mixed, especially if you have some of that really fine glitter, but eventually, no matter what, those glitter particles will eventually settle back down to the bottom, and it looks just as pretty when they're falling down as when they're staying up and swirling around, but um, my favorite example of a suspension, it might keep you entertained and maybe a little therapeutic if you need to relax during this time. Uh, muddy water will do the same thing. Um, eventually, those large particles will settle out to the bottom. Just not as pretty as glitter water. And then orange juice, uh, the pulpy orange juice. Even if it's not the big chunks of pulp, um, if it's not filtered enough, there will be some really small particles, and they will tend to settle to the bottom um, and be kind of thicker, kind of jelly at the bottom. Or some apple juices do that too. It's not really jelly. It's just some kind of muddy particles will settle to the bottom, even if it is filtered once. Some of those more natural, less processed apple juices will have some sediment at the bottom, and those really aren't my preference, but everyone has their own opinions. What do you prefer? Colloids, like I said, are those ones that can let you make some fun laser light shows. The particles are big enough to reflect that light. So milk, um, maybe not pure milk, but if you get a little bit of milk and maybe put it in a glass of water, um, then you could see those laser beams pass through it. And maybe if you want to record a funny video with your phone, you could use some markers to draw on the glass or maybe draw on some paper behind the glass. And then you could make the laser show up in the water and like do a little, yeah, have fun in isolation however you'd like. But uh, these are some tools, some sciencey tools you might have fun with. Fog, of course, um, and always reflect that light. You can see your headlights really well in fog. And then smoke. All laser light shows have to have smoke uh, or fog machines in order to be able to see those fancy lasers. Otherwise, you just see a whole lot of dots on the ceiling and not a whole lot of fancy lasers making all these crazy shapes in the air. So those are our colloid examples. And then solutions. The classic example would be like salt water or sugar water um, in the case of Kool-Aid. As long as you don't add too much sugar, um, as long as it's all dissolved perfectly and homogeneous, then it's a solution. Brass is actually a solid uh, solution, a homogeneous mixture of copper and zinc, uh, just in a solid phase. And then air is a gas solution, uh, because if you're looking at it, you don't see any of the particles. Well, 
not the true air particles, the nitrogen, oxygen, all that stuff that we talked about in question number eight. So that's all of our examples for question number 11.